Okay, so we just covered breakdown of glycogen. But what about the synthesis of glycogen? Let's say we have excess glucose after a meal, and we want to store some of that for later. So we should recognize that pathways can't be exactly reversed, right? We know where determining steps can't be reversed. So therefore, glycogen synthesis can't just be the reverse. We need to make sure that overall, the pathway is still exergonic. So glycogen synthesis is performed by three different enzymes, UDP glucose phosphorylase, glycogen synthase, and glycogen branching enzyme. And in particular, this first step might look a little weird to all of y'all. In the first step of breakdown, right, we were chopping off glycogen into units of glucose 1-phosphate. If that's an exergonic process, we can't just take glucose 1-phosphate and start attaching it to make glycogen, right? Because that would be endergonic. We have to go through this funny intermediate that's actually used in a variety of other pathways. We end up attaching our glucose to a nucleotide. And we can call this kind of activation of our glucose 1-phosphate. What happens is our glucose 1-phosphate here is attached to UTP, a nucleotide. And in the process of that attachment, we are basically cleaving a nice phosphoanhydride bond, which should release significant amounts of energy. We know that's exergonic. And then we'll have our product of this first step, which is a UDP, so the nucleotide, attached to glucose. And we call that our activated glucose. And then from there, we can start building our glycogen with glycogen synthase. So we take that glucose that was hanging out on our UDP glucose, and we attach it basically directly on to the end of glycogen. There is a pretty interesting looking intermediate here that we haven't seen before yet though, folks. In this class, when we talk about reactive intermediates, we've been talking about a lot of negatively charged intermediates. This is actually a positively charged reactive intermediate. How exciting. So what exactly is going on here? Well, in the first step, you'll see that basically the UDP just leaves. <laughs> you can see this curved arrow, right? UDP just leaves the glucose monomer. We know UDP is stable on its own, so it has to be a fairly good leaving group. But the reactive intermediate itself, we call that an oxonium ion because of that positively charged oxygen. That's also relatively stable because of some resonance that can happen with that oxygen. Don't forget that oxygen has a lone pair that it can use to resonate. So UDP, good leaving group, reactive intermediate, fairly stable, although it's positively charged. And then after that, it's a simple nucleophilic attack of one of the nucleophiles we've been seeing a lot in this class, a hydroxyl group, on to the axonium. And that's how we basically have elongated our glycogen by a single glucose unit. Glycogen synthase is a major point of regulation in the synthesis of glycogen. And then the last step, folks, step number three. These three steps actually pretty closely resemble glycogen breakdown. Here we have glycogen branching enzyme, okay? So if we're just adding glucose units, of course, we're adding those linearly. But glycogen is a branched molecule. This branching actually helps our body maximize storage efficiency. The branches pack more tightly. We can get more glucose per unit area. 
So glycogen branching enzyme, it takes part of this linear bit of glycogen and then it attaches it to the sixth carbon of a glucose unit, as you can see here. So we take those long linear chains, grab a segment of that, bam, and attach it to the six, carbon six. And so this is glycogen synthesis.